Hello, friends. Welcome to Journey Through the Bible in One Year. My name is Taya Gobadia, and I'll be leading you through the scriptures. I'm so excited to see what the Lord is doing in this season. I pray that the Lord will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him as we go deeper and deeper in the word of God. I pray that as you have started this journey along with me, that the Lord will strengthen and empower you through this journey to see it to its end. This I ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let us begin. Today is day one of week one, and our scripture reading for today will be from the book of Genesis chapter one and chapter two, and then the book of Matthew chapter one and chapter two, verse one to 12. We'll also be reading from the book of Psalm chapter one, verse one to six, and Proverbs chapter one, verse one to six. Our learning objective, students will be able to cite textual evidence to support an analysis of key details in the Bible about the history of creation, the Garden of Eden, and the life in Eden in the Old Testament. Genesis 1, and it reads, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. Then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place. And let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth and gathered together, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass the herb that yields seeds and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and the herb that yields seeds according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruits, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and seasons and for days and for years. And let them be for light in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. 
And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abound according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the sea and let birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping things, and beast of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, see I have given you every herb that yields seeds, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seeds to you, it shall be for food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life. I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now let's go back and identify some important facts about the beginning of creation using a circle map. A circle map is a great way for us to really brainstorm, to describe, and to really show everything that we've learned from the scriptures so far. So we see in the center, the main idea is the beginning. Right, And in the beginning, we see that God created the earth. We see that the spirit of the living God was hovering over the water. And then the Lord said, let there be light. And it was so. We see that God made herbs and fruits. Right? And it was good. God created great sea creatures and beasts, and those beasts could be dinosaurs, right? He created the sun to rule the day and the the moon to rule the night. God created man, and he created man to be powerful, to be a ruler, and he created man in the image of God. And all that God created, the Bible said, is good. 
Genesis chapter 2. And it reads, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. This is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, before any plant of the field was in the earth, and before any herb of the field had grown, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. But a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree grow that was pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now a river went out of Eden to water the garden and from there it parted and became four river heads. The name of the first is Pishon. It is the one which skirts the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of the land is good. Dilium and the onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It is the one which goes around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Hidekel. It is the one which goes towards the east of Hesaria. The fourth river is the Euphrates. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may eat freely, freely eat. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die and the lord god said it is not good that man should be alone i will make him a helper comparable to him out of the ground the lord god formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see that he would to see what he would call them and what whatever Adam called each living creature that was its name so Adam gave names to all cattle to the birds of the air and to every beast of the field but for Adam there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. 
And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Here we have a picture I found on a website called BibleMappers.com. And I included this map because although it's not certain the exact location of where Garden, the Garden of Eden is located, but many historians believe it's around this area where you see the green dot right above the Persian Gulf. So I thought to include that. Because that looks, that's interesting. Praise the Lord. Now let us look at the important facts from what we just read in the book of Genesis chapter 2. What are some important facts that we can identify about creation using a circle map? Well, we see the presence of God throughout Genesis chapter 2. How God created all these beautiful, beautiful things, living things. We see how God created the tree of life and also the tree of knowledge of good and evil, both located in the Garden of Eden. However, man is not permitted to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We see how God, after he created the heavens and the earth and all that's in it, on the seventh day, he rested. And then he saw man and he, he, he knew that it was not good for man to be alone. So he put Adam asleep. He took a rib and he used that rib to create the first woman. And this woman is Adam's helper. He identified her as bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. We'll later find uh, her name is Eve. And the Bible says that they were naked and they were unashamed. This is considered the first marriage between Adam and Eve. Praise the Lord. Now we're going to look at a plot diagram. As we read through the scriptures... I will be using a plot diagram to summarize and to recap the lessons that we learn and the main point. A plot diagram is a good way to visually pinpoint the sequence of the story or the sequence of the scriptures as we read them. So exposition is usually the beginning, the setting, what took place from the very beginning of the scripture of what we read. And in the beginning, the Bible says God created the heavens and the earth, right? And what is the rising action? These are events that took place that led to the climax, the, the big suspense, this big action, what really stood out, that climax. So the, the series of events that took place in the scripture based on what we read in chapter 1 and 2 of Genesis, is God created man to till the ground and to care for the garden. And the climax is the Lord said it's not good for man to be alone. Now, the following action is just a series of events that took place that led to the conclusion. So the following action is that the Lord put Adam to sleep and took out a rib. And we end chapter two with, from that rib, the Lord created the woman. Now we're going to go into the New Testament, our learning objective. Students will be able to cite textual evidence to support an analysis of key details in the Bible about the genealogy of Jesus Christ and the birth of Jesus in the New Testament. Matthew 
chapter 1, and it reads, The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob. Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez begot Hezron, and Hezron begot Ram. Ram begot Aminadab. Aminadab begot Nashon. Nashon begot Salmon. Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab. Boaz begot Obed by Ruth. Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David the king. David the king begot Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon begot Rehoboam, Rehoboam begot Abijah, and Abijah begot Asa. Asa begot Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat begot Joram, and Joram begot, begot Uzziah. Uzziah begot Jotham, Jotham begot Ahaz, Ahaz begot Hezekiah, Hezekiah begot Manasseh, Manasseh begot Ammon, and Ammon begot Josiah. Josiah begot Jeconiah and his brothers about the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconiah begot Sheatel, and Sheatel begot Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel begot Abuid, Abuid begot Eliakim, and Eliakim begot Azar. Azar begot Zadok, Zadok begot Achim, Achim begot Eluid, Eluid begot Eliza, Eliza begot Matin, Matin begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations. From David unto the captivity in Babylon are 14 generations. And from the captivity in Babylon unto the Christ are 14 generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife, and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Using a tree map, let us visually break down the lineage, the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah from Abraham. So here we have Abraham at the very top. And Abraham had two sons, Isaac and Ishmael. From Isaac, he had Jacob and Esau. From Jacob, he had Judah, who had Perez, who had Hezron. 
Hezron had Ram, Ram had Abinadad, Abinadad had Nishan, Nishan had Solomon, Solomon had Boaz, Boaz had Obed, Obed had Jesse, Jesse had King David. King David had Solomon, Solomon had Rehoboam, Rehoboam had Abijah, Abijah had Asa, Asa had Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat had Joram, Joram had Uriah, Uriah had Jotham, Jotham had Ahaz, Ahaz had Hezekiah, Hezekiah had Manasseh, Manasseh had Am- Ammon, Ammon had Josiah, Josiah had Jeconiah, Jeconiah had she- Sheel, Teal, Sheetil had Zerubbabel, Ru- Zerubbabel had Abihud, Abihu had e- Eliakim, who had Azar, who had Zadok, who had Akim, who had Eluid, who had Elisa, who had Matan, who had Jacob. Jacob had Joseph. Joseph had Jesus, the Messiah. What are some things we can identify? What are the events leading to the birth of Jesus Christ? Let us look through the scriptures again using a flow map. So, In the beginning of chapter 1 of the book of Matthew, we see that Joseph and Mary were engaged. They were betrothed. And then the Holy Spirit, right, came upon Mary and she conceived a child named Jesus. Now, when Joseph discovered this, he was confused. He was, you know trying to figure out what to do. But the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream as he slept and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth the son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall become, shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, Bring back word to me, that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. So 
So what are some circumstances surrounding the birth of Jesus? Let us look through the scriptures and identify some important facts that we've read from this chapter using a circle map. So we see in the center, it says circumstances surrounding the birth of Jesus. So what are some things that popped out through the scripture? Well, we know that Joseph and Mary and baby Jesus are together. Mary gave birth to baby Jesus in Bethlehem. We know that King Herod was worried when he found out that this this child that's born born and um, could be a threat to his kingship in the eyes of King Herod. So he sent three wise men to go and discover where he's located and, and come back and tell him. However, these wise men receive a divine dream. God spoke to them in a dream, telling them, do not go back to the king. So they return to their homes using a different route. How do you think King Carol felt? We'll later discover as we continue reading it in day two. Let us summarize what we've read in the New Testament, in the book of Matthew, chapter one and two. We learned about the genealogy of Jesus from Abraham to Jesus. We also learned that Joseph and Mary got engaged. We also found out that Joseph discovered that Mary was pregnant and he was worried at first, but that he was later reassured by an angel in a dream that Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. Joseph was also warned to flee Egypt to flee to go to Egypt because King Harold is trying to kill Jesus. Jesus was born. That's the climax. Jesus was born. And King Harold sent three wise men to find him and bring him word. Now, the following action, these are the events that took place um, that led to the conclusion of the scriptures that we read. So, We see that the wise men followed the East Star and located baby Jesus, and they were filled with great joy. And the scriptures ended, chapter 2 of the book of Matthew, with the wise men being warned in a dream not to return to King Harold and to return to their homes a different way. Now we're going to look at the book of Psalm and the book of Proverbs, and then we're going to compare um, the differences and the similarities between the two verses as we conclude today. Book of Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 to 6, and it reads, The way of the righteous and the end of the ungodly. Verse 1, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so but are like chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1 to 6. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. To give prudence to the simple, simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning. And a man of understanding will attain wise counsel to understand a proverb and an enigma, the words of the wise and their riddles. (laughs) 
So now let us compare the two chapters that we just read, the two books. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 to 6, and Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1 to 6, using a double bubble map. In the book of Psalm, chapter 1, verse 1 to C, 1 to 6, it talks about how those who delight in the law of the Lord, the word of God, in his law, he should meditate on the word of God day and night. So we have a picture of the Bible. So we should be reading the Bible according to the word of God in the book of Psalm. Day and night, we should meditate. We should read it. We should study. We should think about it. We should reflect on the word of God. Praise the Lord. It also says, still in the book of Psalm chapter 1, praise the Lord, that those who meditate on the word of God day and night will be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. So we have here on the second bubble, a tree planted by a river, right? So the person that reads the Bible and meditate on it day and and night will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That means when it comes time for them to reap harvest and to reap a blessing, right? They will be fruitful. Their leaves will not wither. That means when trials and tribulations and things happen in life, they will not succumb to it, right? They will stand firm and they will prosper. Praise the Lord. When we look at the book of Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, the author is King Solomon. And for David, the book of Psalm, he wrote most of it. But chapter one, he wrote. But let's look again at Proverbs chapter one, verse one to six. What are some things that stands out? Well, it talks about how a, it talks about the character of a wise man. The Bible says that a wise man will hear the word of God and increase learning. They will increase in wisdom. A man of understanding will attain wise counsel. So we have here on the bottom, it says wise man and, and it, is an image of a, a man with wheels and gauges in his his mind spinning. That's wisdom increasing. Praise the Lord. And then we have here on this bubble, the blue bubble, right? It says to know, to discern, and to receive. So according to the book of Proverbs chapter 1, right? It's important to know wisdom and instruction. It's important to perceive the words of understanding, and to receive the instruction of wisdom, which is the word of God. So what are some things that these two chapters or these two books and their first chapter have in common, right? Both give instruction on wise behavior. Both implies that hearing the word of God will cause you to increase in wisdom. And they both Sheer knowledge and wisdom. So how do you feel about today's lesson and why? I want you to be honest with yourself and have that conversation. Are you happy with what you learned and what the Lord is revealing to you through the scriptures? Are there some parts of the scriptures that made you sad? Or is there a reason why you may be feeling sad? Are you unsure or are you excited with what the Lord is revealing and just this journey that you have embarked upon? So this is a good way for you to kind of reflect on the lesson that you learned today and um, go from there. Praise the Lord. So we're going to later learn the power of words. God has given us power in the authority to decree something with our words and it will be established. Remember, God created man to have dominion. God created man to be powerful and to be a ruler. So when we speak words, 
we have to be careful that we speak life over our life. So every single day as we conclude our lessons, we are going to speak life over our life because life is in our tongue. So we're going to speak the word of God and we're going to personalize it. Feel free to repeat after me. I am love, John 3, 16. I am protected, Isaiah 54, verse 17. I am forgiven, 1 John 1, 9. I have eternal life, John 3, 36. I do not lack, Philippians 4, 19. I am called, Jeremiah 1, verse 5. I am blessed, Psalm chapter 5, verse 12. I am fearfully and wonderfully made, Psalm 139, verse 14. It's going to be a blessed day. In Jesus' name, amen. These are some references that we use today. The map, I I got that from BibleMappers.com. The scriptures were taken from Bible Gateway. Um, The Bible reading plan that we'll be following throughout this journey is from Rose Publishing. It's called One Year Bible Reading Plan. The link of where you can get the Bible reading plan is below, or you can just follow along every day. It will be posted in the videos. And also, I'm using Canva to create these slides. Thank you so much for joining me for day one and week one of our journey through the Bible. I pray that the word of God will continue to bless you. I pray that the Lord will keep you. And I pray that the Lord will continue to speak to and through you through his word. This I ask in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Remember, God loves you and God bless you. Bye-bye.